said, who shall persuade? So let's, okay, so let's look at 1 Kings uh, chapter 22, 20 through 24 for the verses. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said, on this manner and another said on that manner and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and the Lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so now therefore behold the lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of all these thy prophets and the lord hath spoken evil concerning thee but zedekiah the son of shana <laughs> hey, i'm sorry with near and smoke micah on the cheek and said which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee so God wanted Ahab to go fight at Ramoth Gilead because this is where God was going to kill him there were spirits up in heaven giving suggestions to God on how they were going to persuade Ahab to fight one spirit was saying, I would do this. And another spirit was saying, I would do that. In verse 21 and 22, another spirit came forth. And God basically said, what's your plan? The spirit said that he would go and be a lying spirit to the prophets, giving counsel to Ahab, who was asking his prophets, should he go do battle? The spirit would use Ahab's own prophets to misguide him into a battle that would be his last. God said, basically... Yes, that idea will work. Go do it. <laughs> Most I be a little messy. See? He, I mean, I'm just, I ain't trying to be disrespectful. But we made in his image. Like, you know, I feel like people just, you know. And it, this reflect on people in the church, man. They act so, you know, just, just stuck up. No, just so holier than thou. Can't tell them nothing. But they don't like to hear this stuff because they can't handle it. It poke holes in their scriptures. It poke holes in their false doctrines. It poke holes in them because it shows. You know, like you out here, first of all, you act so holier than thou and you don't even realize you evil, just like everybody else. You evil, just, we we are all as filthy rags. Ain't nobody better than nobody, as far as you know. And our people, you know, and having money and title and stuff like that, that don't that don't make you nothing. That that makes you nothing, you know. Um, so, but it's just you know some of these scriptures. These are things that pastors don't like to look at, preachers don't like to look at because. It pokes a hole in the narrative in the box that they try to put the most high in so even though the spirit did the work God received the credit because he gave the spirit permission to do the work it's no different from the military the president sits back and signing papers authorizing war sending troops all over and he gets the credit in the end but the army does the groundwork God is the ultimate president controlling everything, sending spirits to do both good and evil. And that's what I'm trying to point out here. Uh, you know, people, the church for the longest time, um, you know, they reject that side of, of, uh, of the most high. You know, it's like, that's why they love the New Testament. They love to run a paw. And most of them, you know, they love the New Testament because when they hear something that they don't like from the Old Testament, that's when you get the, oh, well, that don't matter no more because that was done away with, you know. Um, 
that you know we don't got to do that no more and stuff like that and that's just not true you know um let me see that's just not true because yes he did uh you know he did come and uh, christ did come to uh fulfill the law he did but Christ has not had his second coming yet, you know, so that was that was also um depicted um that was also depicted in his uh you know in the earlier in the old testament in the prophecies about Christ. You know, it was prophesied that he would have a second coming. So yes, he did come to uh fulfill some things and it's just like, you know, um I can't, you know, stone you or I can't kill you uh, because you're a homosexual or a thief or, you know, whatever. Um, I, I can't like how Paul was doing, like how he was, uh, you know, killing people and Christ met him on the road to Damascus, you know, it's, it's like that, you know, so when Christ came, yes, that penalty of death, of instant death, that was you know we we cannot do that you know but we are still to love um you know to show love to each other and so moving on um i'm in psalms 66 and this is verse 5 let me see so Sixty-six, verse five. Come, come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He is terrible in his doings to men slash humans. When God sent the nuclear bomb to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he is terrible in his doings to men. I mean, he 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 allowed it. You know, he authorized, he authorized it. You know, 9-11, Eric Garner, the politically motivated concentration camps in Germany with the fake Jewish people uh, when the suicide bombers come. He is terrible in his doings to men slash humans. All things like this are allowed by God to happen. And most people don't even consider that God is punishing them all these wars being stirred up god is responsible for doing it you cannot have a god that is all good with all the evil that is going on in the world today if god was all good then the earth will reflect that and vice versa with god being all evil the earth will reflect that as well and we know that that is not the case you know even though there are many evil things that happen on the face of the earth i believe there are good things that outweigh them it's just the evil things are you know pretty bad the earth has a balance just as everything in life has balance because the most high is balanced he is the most stable balance of us all he has a good side which is the right side and a bad side which is the left side a lot of people say well that is the god in the old testament but in the new testament he not like that just because he is not so quick to kill you don't mean he won't take you out some people are dying miserably and slowly in the church even even though they don't realize it and to me instant death is better than seven years of suffering watching as your health fades but just in case you forgot uh you know malachi three and six and uh hebrews 13 and 8 you know, they basically say, you know, Ahia and Yeshaya uh, are the same and they don't change. The angel that led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, um, that was Yeshaya, by the way, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And he did not play any games then, according to the book of Exodus uh, 23, 20, uh, verse 20 and 21. And so... Let me see. Let's read that. Exodus 23. 20 
20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So, uh, speaking of the angel of God, who is Yeshia, who is the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, um, he led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And something happened. We can read about it in uh, Leviticus 10, uh, verses 1 and 2. And Nadab and Abihu, sons of Aaron, the verses is right here. That's why I'm reading it off the screen, not looking at the phone. And Adab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which commanded them not and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord the Lord killed these men not Satan the church is responsible for changing the image slash character of the most high and his beloved son Yeshia they refuse to accept the fact that the most high has an evil side to him as well as a good side. The God of Christianity uh, is the Gentiles God. They have taken a few scriptures and made God into what they perceive him to be. The church accepts the white effeminate dude with the rosy cheeks and long hair who the world calls Jesus uh, but his the white dude his real name is Cesare Borgia he's the sixth pope of Rome's son. Even though he, Cesar Borgia, had a sexual relationship with his sister, which is incest, his gay lover, Leonardo da Vinci, um, along with Michelangelo, painted the numerous pictures that we see today of a white Jesus, both of them committing identity theft. <laughs> the whitewashing and changing the names of the biblical figures happened during the Renaissance, Dark Ages, with the identity theft of a black savior being at the center of the secret controversy. This would be when the Bible was translated from Greek to English. I, lo, I, oh, in Hebrews, uh, this is chapter 10, verse 7. It says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. And so Christ says he comes in the volume of the book. You have to take the good and the bad. The God of Christianity and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Bible are not the same. When I'm talking about Christianity, <clears throat> I'm talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Um, that is who started, you know, pretty much all of these religions. Um, if you look at my videos, I already have a, um, a section about Islam. Um, I'm telling you how the Christ, the Roman Catholic Church uh, started Islam. There was no Islam before the 7th century. Uh, there was no Muslims before the 7th century. I already talked about this and proved it. Uh, so you can get caught up on that but the Roman Catholic Church are the ones who created the Baptist Church um, that was started by a white man named John Smith in 1609 I also have something on here about the Jehovah's Witness uh, being started by Charles Taze Russell um, he was an imposter Jewish person as well um, so the Roman Catholic Church that's why in some instances you'll hear like um, about the Vatican uh, they said so many secrets in the Vatican that it would literally shake the core of Christianity. Uh, the Bible does not teach Christianity. It does not teach <clears throat> Christianity. I've already said that earlier followers of Christ, they were called Masonics. And um, it was known as an order after the Messiah. So um, early followers 
you know, they were not called Christians. Christians uh, were around back at that time. Uh, they followed, dang, I forget the God that they followed, but it was, it was a pagan God. I want to say it was Mithra, Mithra, and so, um, or um, Serapis or Ceramis, but I think it was Mithra. And so, uh, you know, they fused paganism and Christianity together uh, with, and, but the Bible does not teach Christianity. Uh, I know a lot of people call Christ, Christ, but Christ is a title. Um, so the Roman Catholic Church is no bueno. So <clears throat> they are the uh, big influence that, that people uh, are missing. They are the missing link that people are not paying attention to. Uh, a lot of paganism, Sunday worship. Uh, I, I have read instances uh or i have shared instances where uh the catholic church literally um say that they uh changed the sabbath from saturday to sunday like they are saying that they <clears throat> they have the authority to do that uh, you know some of the quotes from them that i have put onto my page like they saying that they pretty much you know speak for God and so we have the Catholics are in, in my opinion not good at all and so um, I wanted to read another it's, I wanted to read another verse here but uh, it's okay if you don't want to accept this because God has one more man slaughter coming up when that seventh seal is broken and the fifth trumpet is blown soon. Before I go to Revelation 9 and 15, I wanted to bring out Isaiah 66. <clears throat> Stop be talking about this. This is, if you go to Isaiah 66, start at verse 15. I'm going to read it. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Now, when the world was destroyed the first time, it was with water. The Most High made a promise um, that he would not destroy the earth no more uh, with water. But we know, uh, if you read the Bible, and you know, even people in church know that the second time is supposed to be with fire. So this is how you know that this is a future prophecy. This has not happened yet. So when earlier when I was saying how Christ hasn't had his second coming yet, this is this is one of the prophecies that was written about him. I mean, it literally says it right here in verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. <clears throat> For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. It's pork. It's that pork. And the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So what that means is, um, okay, verse 17, when it says they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves, what that means is when you hear people say, oh, I can eat pork, you know, pork is this, pork is that, I'm going to eat my uh, pig feet, I'm going to eat my pig ears, I'm going to eat my chitlins, but then you see them fat as hell, uh, excuse my language, I try not to use profanity, but it slips sometimes. Um, you see them fat, you know, uh, it's just like a perfect example. Um, I seen somebody say, uh, in Soul Food, the movie Soul Food, they eat all that unhealthy food for their bodies. And then, you know, Big Mom's laying up in the hospital and they, you know, continuing on to eat the same food that made her ill. And so 
is like ritualistic in a way. I don't know, kind of archaic and I don't know, ritualistic, but it is weird, you know. Um, if you've never seen what chitlins look like, you know, um, when they get the pig and cut it open, it's the intestines. It's, just, it's gross. These scraps was fed to our ancestors because they wanted to get back at the most high. They knew that we are not allowed to eat pork. Pork is bad, and you know that because when Christ cast the demons out of uh, the man, they went into the pork, they went into the pigs, and they drove the pigs down the mountains, and the pigs died. So the demons could go and haunt other people, go and terrorize other people. That's how you know pork is bad, because there was other animals out there like cows, chickens, dogs, sheep, goats, I'm sure. But it chose to go into the pigs because demons are dirty. They're unclean. Just like pigs. Ain't nothing changed. You see it in you see it in the movies. They put it right in your face. That like I said, you need to go watch that movie. Um Denzel Washington Fallen. Go watch that movie. They put it right in your face. And so this is another Isaiah sixty six, you know, um, 15 through 17, you know, um, you'll see all people, all I, got, all I got to do is just pray over it, just pray over it, which is, I have a lesson on pork, too, um, pork is, like, nasty, the pig don't have no sweat glands, that's why I can't release the toxins, like, it eats anything, it eats anything, it'll even eat humans, so, it's like, Hey, I get it. You know, I growing up, I never was a big pork chop eater. I never was a big pork eater. Like, I, I would love ham, honey baked ham. But it's something that, you know, it wasn't not hard for me to let go. So, I just wanted to share that too, you know. That is going to happen. And what I was saying was, a lot of this, when I pull this out, Isaiah 66, 15 through 17... That's when you hear pastors get to all uh, using all these um, excuses. Uh, <clears throat> that 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 was done away with. That was done away with. See, we ain't gotta follow that no more. When Christ came back, you know, He gave us permission to eat uh, unclean things that that do bodily harm to us. You know, making us fat and and clogging our arteries and 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 killing us. And why we number one in heart disease and. And, and all and cholesterol and and all of this stuff and and you and people know that I'm right this has been a plague we definitely got to start eating more healthy and I'm telling you stop eating pork if you if you are suffering from obesity high blood pressure um, clogged arteries, hypertension, you'd be surprised. Stop eating pork for 30 days to 60 days. You'd be surprised what it do to your diet. That's why, <laughs> that's why I'm so skinny because I don't eat like, I don't eat a lot of, um, pork. I don't eat pork at all. Um, and I, really don't eat any dairy either you know like I like pizza like um, yesterday I had pizza I like macaroni and cheese because that is dairy um, on my tacos I like sour cream um, but I don't just like eat ice cream and stuff like that but I'm about to because I do I need to gain weight so um, you know dairy is not you know unclean but um it is weird that, you know, they have you drinking milk from a cow and you see the, you see a, a baby cow and what it grow into. And it's like, it would do the same with us. You know, it would make us grow probably larger than what we really supposed to. Anyway, last verse, Revelation, uh, let me see, this is Revelation 9. Revelation 9 And my, my computer My computer be locking up on me here This is the last verse I was going to do another video But nope 
And so this is Revelation 9 and 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. That also ain't happened yet. And so God had this plan already written in his book. He will lose these angels. He will loose these angels to destroy one third of mankind in one day, one hour. And out of 7 billion people on the earth currently, that is like 2.5 billion people. So like all of China, 1.3 billion. USA, 332 million. Brazil, 202 million. Indonesia, 252 million. Russia, 142 million. We know that a sixth of Russia will remain uh, due to by uh, from Ezekiel 39 and 2. But who will get the brunt of this? The people not keeping the commandments of the Most High. If you know him, then you will keep his commandments. And that's 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 3. If you get caught up in Christianity, Islam, and any other religions that uh, in that hour of judgment when he returns, you will be taken away. If you keep the commandments, Psalm 91 applies to you. He will reserve you to the side and no destruction will come to you. And uh, the last scripture, Proverbs 72, uh, keep my commandments and live. And so nobody's perfect. We're not perfect. You know, nobody deserves salvation as a gift. You know, but um, we have to try our best uh, to be righteous, to do right, to do good. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Have a blessed day.